Well, while we have used numbers all of our lives, I'm going to take uh, 10 minutes here and describe to you sets of numbers. I meant for that to be a line. Um, so we're going to describe to you sets of numbers and we're also going to talk about some symbols, in particular inequality symbols like the less than symbol and the greater than symbol and an equals symbol and a not equals symbol. So um, just a little discussion so that you can understand these words as we use them throughout our semester together. First of all, what I've drawn here is a number line. I like to always put zero in the center and I look to, like to put in equal increments here positive whole numbers going off to the right out towards, you know, over here is towards a positive infinity. And then from zero, I would go to the left for negative numbers on out to a negative infinity. And again, what I want you to notice about this number line is that I've drawn equal increments or I've tried, tried to draw equal increments here, 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 etc. What you need to understand is that a number like the number three that is further to the right on the number line than a number like a number two. So the number three is greater than a negative two because it is further to the right on uh, the number line than is a negative two. So this statement right here represents three is greater than a negative two. Maybe you could think of this big opening is goes towards the big number or sometimes people say the point goes th towards the smaller numbers, how they remember that. But this symbol right here is called greater than. Um, so please try to work on that in case that's ever given you trouble. If I were next to ask you to put a symbol between a negative two and a positive one, what it's either a greater than or a less than symbol that I'd like you to put here. I'd like you to see that a negative two, I'm going to go ahead and erase, oops, I can't erase like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase those arrowheads. So this negative two versus this one is further to the left than is the one. So the negative two is smaller than is a positive one. Also, a negative number is always smaller than a positive number. So when I put two negative numbers on here, don't be confused because four seems to be bigger than three. If you come on over here on the number line, a negative four is about right here. Well, a negative four is to the left of this negative three. So the negative four is smaller. So I would point that arrowhead towards the smaller number. And then, you know, we'll, we'll be asking you to address um, numbers and put inequality symbols between them. So decimals are not. This one's a positive number. This one's a negative number. So the positive number is bigger than that negative number. If I asked you to put, um, you know, maybe a symbol between these two, you could put that. You really could also put a, a line under an inequality symbol. Five is less than or equal to five. And you could even put this symbol as well. Five is greater than or equal to five. All right, so let's say now that I asked you to think about a triangle. And what I want you to know is that the sum of the angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. And next, I wanted you to compare it to the sum of the angles in a parallelogram. I'm trying to draw a parallelogram. That's a four-sided uh, object where the opposite sides are parallel to one another. And the sum of the angles in a parallelogram equals 360 degrees. And so I'm wanting you to compare the 180 degrees to the 360 degrees with either this symbol or this symbol. So 180 degrees is less than 360, but you can put this equal to also. It's This means less than or equal to. Less than or equal right here is what that means. Um, also, if you put the 360 first by chance and the 180 second, then you could write it like this, that the 360 degrees is greater than or equal to 180 degrees. 
The next thing we might ask you to do is we might ask you to take some words like this one. 15 is greater than 5. And I just want you to write a sentence about that. So the number 15 is greater, greater than 5. That's all I'm looking for. Um, say I, I said to you 7 is not equal to 10. And I wanted you to write a math sentence with that. So I'd want the number 7. And is not, this slash means not equal to 10. All right, finally, uh, the hardest p segment for this particular section, which is a little challenging to keep track of, I will um, ask you these kinds of questions, so you do need to be ready for this, is to describe the world of real numbers. And I'm going to use a little pound sign for numbers. And the world of real numbers stems or is created by the world of rational numbers, and again, pound sign for numbers, and irrational numbers, not rational. Ear, I-R in English, stands for not rational numbers. And I'd like to describe those, but I'd like to fill up the number line to help you see those numbers. So I'm going to start in the center of this very small box. So in the very beginning, if you will, I'm trying to be silly. Um, was the world of natural numbers. The world of natural numbers included the number 1 and the number 2 and the number 3 and the number 4 and the number 5. That's the world of natural numbers. I'm going to color code this as I go. Although I'm not sure that's going to work so well. So maybe I'll come on over here and say natural. Let's go ahead and do that. That natural numbers includes the number 1 two, three, four, and then let's go dot, 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 on out to a positive infinity. Well, then we added the phrase, the word whole numbers, the list of whole numbers. Well, would you notice that the natural number box is inside of the whole number box? So that means all natural numbers are whole numbers, but all we do to the grouping here is add the number zero. So the list of whole numbers includes, begins with the number zero and goes in even increments on out to a positive infinity. So look, we've got dots on our number line. We filled in 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 all the way on out here. The next grouping is the group of integers. And that includes the ones we've already spoken about. That includes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 natural numbers plus the number 0. But integers now include negative whole numbers, if you will. So now I'm going to add a negative 1 to the group, a negative 2 to the group, a negative 3 to the group, a negative 4 to the group, all the way on out to a negative infinity. So if I wrote a phrase and I was trying to describe integers in set notation, I might say dot 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 from a negative infinity that it includes a negative 3 and a negative 2 and a negative 1 and it also includes 0 because that was that whole number and 1 and 2 and 3 dot dot dot. So the dots proclaim that we go off to a positive infinity this way and then off to a negative infinity this way. So look, our number line's getting rather full. Now, the list of rational numbers includes all of these. So it includes all these dots, but it includes practically everything on this number line in between. It includes almost all the dots. Um, these are supposed to be dots on this number line. And I'm just trying to, except for there's a few that are over here in the irrational number category. But rational numbers can be written as fractions. We'll talk about algebraic expressions that are called rational expressions, and they will be fractions. So the fraction 1 half gets added right here. I'm going to kind of draw it in. Kind of, uh, actually, I think I'll put these in red. So 1 half is a, a rational number. Um, 1 and 7 eighths is a rational number. That's right about here. Um, a negative 3 
quarters. Right about here is a, a fraction. But you know, so is 8 over 2 which is 4. So all these numbers prior to now could be written as fractions as well. Whole numbers can be written as fractions. So we've practically filled up the number line, but irrational numbers now, let's talk about those, are numbers that I cannot write as a fraction, and they mostly involve radicals. The square root of 2 is approximately equal. If you took your calculator to 1.414 da 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 as in I don't remember what the numbers are beyond this. But these numbers, when you write them as decimals, 1.7, I don't remember, da 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 these numbers as decimals do not repeat and they do not terminate. Back here to these fractions, one half does terminate as a decimal number. It's 0 0.5. Three quarters does terminate as a decimal number. It's 0 0.75. One third repeats. It's 0 0.3333333333. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, So irrational numbers, when you write them, the decimal place value does not repeat. It does not terminate. So the square root of 4 is not irrational because it's equal to the number 2. So I cannot include that one in this list. The next one that would be in this list that's irrational is the square root of 5, and then the square root of 6, and the square root of 7, and the square root of 8, but not the square root of 9 because it's equal to a whole number. So that one, oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, the square root of 9 is not an irrational number. Um, the square root of 16 is not an irrational number. The square root of 25. And then finally, all, these two groupings make up the world of real numbers. And when we add a few of these irrational numbers in here, this number line is covered. Just want you to know that we could add a topic in here called imaginary numbers, but we're going to stay in the real world. We're going to stay in the real world of numbers. When you put real and imaginary together, you have what's called a complex world. World. That's another course. Hope you've enjoyed the study of our real number system.